Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create amazing custom transitions very easily right here inside of After Effects. So we'll be looking at a couple of transitions and let's go ahead and go into our new composition, which I already have one image in here. Remember, you can do this with video. I'm just using images so it's easier on my computer. So to create these custom transitions, we're gonna use the shape tools, which are up here at the top. And for this one, I'm gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna grab the rectangle tool and all we're gonna do is just draw out a nice rectangle from you know halfway through our composition just like this okay and basically what i want to show you guys here is how you can create your own custom transitions these are just like the basic techniques and i'm going to get a little bit harder as we move forward with each transition so once we have our rectangle in here what we want to do is also think about duplicating it you can go up to edit duplicate there it is and and we come over here and just move it over and we'll want to just Kind of get closer, it doesn't matter if they overlap because our goal here is to make sure that our final screen is completely uh, one color. So it doesn't have to be black, it could be white, but we want to make sure that the entire solid here is one color. So now what we want to do is start to animate this. So let's go ahead, move forward in time, maybe it's like one second. We'll start our transition at one second. We'll open up rectangle one, we'll go to transform rectangle one, and we'll add a keyframe for position, and we'll move that keyframe forward in time, and we'll come over here and we will increase the Y position to go up like this, so it's right outside of our uh, composition there. And that's looking good, and then we'll move forward by a few frames, almost a little bit before the last keyframe here. We'll go to Rectangle 2, go to Transform Rectangle 2, add a keyframe for position. We'll move that keyframe forward in time just by a little bit, and we'll bring down the Y posi position down here. All right, awesome. So now let's just hit U on a keyboard so we can only see the keyframes, and let's make these last keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So now what's happening, we have the first solid that comes in and then we have the second solid that comes in. So basically, you know, you're like, oh wow, this transition does not look great. You're transitioning to a black solid. No worries, we just need the animation. So let's go bring in our second image or video clip and we'll scale this down real quick. All right, and what we're gonna do is bring the second image or video layer underneath our shape layer, which I'll rename this to rectangle. Uh, transition okay and we'll toggle switch the modes this button down here until we see the blending modes and track map and what we're gonna do is for the image 2 we're gonna set the track mat to alpha mat so now we can see our new image and what basically was happening here is that we now we have this transition taking place and that is awesome so this is the basic concept of how we can do the, do this effect with the alpha mat and just creating our own custom transition and of course, make sure to turn on motion blur as well and turn it on the top so you can have that natural motion blur for this transition. So that will look really cool. Uh, but I'll keep it off for right now. So let's go ahead and move on to another transition. So let's do like a rounded rectangle transition. And this might be just a little basic, but just, just kind of give you an idea what this could look like. So let's draw out like a nice rounded rectangle like this. We go into rectangle one, go to rectangle path one, and we can increase the roundness by a lot. And what we can do here, and very easily, is what we can do is hit S on our keyboard for scale. And what we can do is add a keyframe for scale and we can scale this up, up all the way until it's filling up the entire composition. And we can move this keyframe forward in time and we can set the scale down to 0%. And we can of course make these both easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So basically now we'll have like this nice transition coming in here. Uh, it's very basic, but we'll go ahead and bring in the third image here, which is of a nice little dog. We'll put it underneath our shape layer and we'll toggle switch the modes until we see the alpha mat right here. And of course we need to scale this image down real quick. Okay, so now we come through here, see we have like this very easy, you know, block transition. Of course you can expand out the time of the transition by moving over the keyframes. And you know, that's just one uh, easy transition. So let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit more uh, complex. And we'll bring in another image here, image four. So let's grab the ellipse tool. And here, I want, what I want to do is draw out a perfect circle. And it doesn't have to be really big. We can keep it this small, right? And what we can do is kind of just position it up in a corner like so. Like kind of like weirdly like that, but that's cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to add and we're going to add a repeater. Okay, and we're going to go into repeater one and we can increase the number of copies. But before we do that, I want it to go to the transform for repeater one, make sure it's transform repeater one. And I want to increase the X position 
and kind of just see how close I can get. And the goal here is you want to make sure that all these circles are touching. If they're not touching, you're not going to have a complete transition. So once you're happy with this, go ahead and increase the number of copies all the way across. And that's looking good. Then we also need to add another repeater. So in this repeater, we're going to go into repeater 2. We're going to go into transform repeater 2. We're going to set the X position right here down to 0. And we're going to increase the Y position here. And we'll see how much room we have here. So we want to make sure that this is perfectly touched up like this, and then we increase the number of copies all the way to the bottom. Okay, so now we can go back into the transform repeater one, and we can decrease the scale, kind of just like this. And we'll go ahead and set this down to 0%. We'll add a keyframe, we'll move forward in time, and we'll set the scale up to 100%. So since these circles are going to be on by just default, what we need to do is just move the circles over. And if you need to, just increase the number of copies if it's not going to go all the way across. And that's good. Okay, awesome. So, and now what we can do is take our image 4 here and set the, out, the track mat to alpha mat. Right? And now you have this nice custom transition. Let's go ahead and actually move over the keyframes by a little bit. Maybe make them both easy ease keyframes. And now you should have this nice transition beautiful and of course we can continue to stretch that out but yeah so that's a really cool way to make a nice transition so what else can we create here let's go ahead and create one more transition I'll bring in, in another image so we'll go ahead and grab the polygon tool and we'll just draw out a polygon like this and what is that is that a hexagon I totally forgot my size of shapes here but go here and we'll just need to find a nice little spot here and we'll do like a nice little polygon transition, but we'll keep them all in the same place. So, Because in our last transition, all the circles came on like as a group. This time I want to kind of keep the polygons independently, like kind of animating in from the center. So what we need to do is go to Polystar 1, go to Transform Polystar 1, and we'll need to scale this in. So add a keyframe for scale, move that keyframe forward in time, and actually we'll come to 4 seconds. And we'll set the scale down to 0%. Okay, so now we have this, and we can make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe, hit F9 on the keyboard. So we can't use a repeater this, in this case, so we have to do this kind of independently, and we can do it really fast. What we can do is go up to Edit, Duplicate, and we just move this over to about right here. And we can take both of the polystars here and duplicate them, bring them to the top so we can keep them in order. And we're going to kind of manually you know, set up this transition kind of like this, and once we have the first row done, it's like, you know, game on from here. And we'll just do one more. And then once we have our first row done here, what we can do is duplicate everything, bring them to the top, and come over here and kind of just put this in nicely in place like so. And we might need to add one more polystar, and I actually need to do a little bit better of a job. So we can zoom in here. And we turn off, and we can turn off our mask here by clicking this uh, mask visibility button down here. And now we can kind of see what we're doing. And I'm going to use the arrow keys to make sure everything's going to be locked in place. And it's okay to have a little bit of overlapping. And of course, there's a little bit of a gap there, but we're going to go ahead and just like leave that be. Um, so looking good. So basically, now we have this nice independent transition here, and we need to continue to duplicate this and make it look good. So. Let's go ahead and fill up this gap right here, just duplicate the last polystar, and I'll just move this over. All right, no problem. So we shouldn't have any more issues here. So we'll take all the polystars and duplicate them, bring them to the top. And perfect. And we'll just take the last, we'll take the last row here so we don't have too many. Duplicate them, bring them to the top. Now we have this amazing, you know, polygon transition here, and we can, of course, you know, offset these keyframes by a little bit to make them random if we want to. So I'll kind of do that just a little bit, make a little bit of a random transition here. All right, and that should be a nice little offset there. And now let's go ahead and set our image 5 to alpha mat. Nice. What we'll do is we'll just add a entire rectangle to this entire thing. Kind of like this. And we'll make it nice and big. 
and we'll animate this in. So once the animation is kind of wrapping up here, like kind of at the end here, the last keyframe, go to rectangle one, add a keyframe for transform rectangle one for position and move forward by like one frame and just bring this up all the way. And it's just, just in case if you're not going to be perfect about it, like I was. So this should move up all the way and this will fill up all the cracks and you know, that we left out with our, you know, rectangles. Okay, so remember to turn on motion blur and turn it on the top. All right, and after a quick render, this is what we have. And just a few nice transitions in there. So that's just a few ways you can create some awesome transitions. Of course, this idea is completely limitless. So you can definitely go crazy with what you're looking to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a good day.